Thank you. Uh, I'm chairman of the New York State Economic Development Council, which represents all the individual uh, economic developers that work in the counties, cities, towns, and villages across New York State and uh, all the support service industries uh, that are involved in economic development. However, in real life, I'm the economic developer in Tompkins County, which is really Ithaca, New York. Uh, so I welcome all of you and say hello from the People's Republic of Ithaca. <laughs> any, any of you that know Ithaca know it's a very strange place where 49% of the people are environmentalists, 49% are socialists, and myself and my son make up the rest of the <laughs> population. Uh, and I think we've been a little bit too gloomy today. I think we should be thankful that the state was correct in, in not joining the Eurozone, as I think they had <laughs> contemplated. Uh, at New York State EDC, uh, we're pretty much focused on businesses uh, and helping businesses that sell products or services to customers outside their communities, outside the state, to the rest of the country, uh, and to the rest of the, of the world. And uh, uh, that's, that's a, a, a real challenge being located in New York State. Uh, we firmly believe that any of those companies to be competitive, to be successful, must use technology in the way their product works and use technology in the way their product is, is made. And I'll give you one, uh, two examples in my hometown. We have a durable goods manufacturer called Borg Warner. It's been there forever. Uh, and they used to make zillions of little chain pieces for the automobile industry, uh, mostly transmission components, drive chains. And now they make very complex uh, component systems. And they wouldn't be able to survive in upstate New York with a cost structure unless they had used technology to uh, make their products very much different and very much competitive where there's added value. By the way, that's a union shop, uh, Teamsters, and I say that because the average Teamsters are a foot taller than me, and I just wanted to give them a, a shout out. Uh, <laughs> the other one is uh, a company called Kionix, which used some Cornell technology uh, in all your uh, devices that you probably have here today. There's a little MEMS device, microelectrical mechanical system, that uh, as you move your device around, your device knows it's being moved. And that is probably made in Ithaca by this company. They now have 200 people, were acquired by a Japanese company, and we're hoping to convince that Japanese company to keep the company there in Ithaca and expand them. Uh, one of the issues I had with some of the data I saw, particularly related to the uh, uh, Beacon Hill data and technology, you're measuring uh, some metrics that I don't think are very useful. Uh, patents per 100,000 inhabitants uh, and the level of R&D that's coming into academic institutions. I think that's meaning, absolutely meaningless unless it somehow translates to uh, useful technologies for businesses that are creating jobs. And I think a better measure might be a licensing revenues from that intellectual property. Uh, and a really good measure, I think, is how much private sector, sector equity are the companies that are licensing technologies from New York State universities, how much are they attracting? And I think when we tout the upstate or all the New York State research and development universities uh, were exaggerating their current impact because there's not, in my opinion, a lot of technology transfer that's coming out of them. There's a lot of research and development money that's coming into them, but not that many companies spinning out of them relative to the amount that's going in. And I think there's two reasons for that, and in both cases, the state, the federal government, local communities have an important role to play. I think uh, to create good jobs, to help our existing companies and new entrepreneurs use technology to compete in the global marketplace, we need to incentivize universities and researchers to work with private sector companies, to work with entrepreneurs, 
to start businesses on themselves. Right now, in many universities, there's a negative impact on getting tenure if you work with a private sector business, if you're a young faculty member trying to make a name for yourself in a university. So a culture within a, these universities needs to be changed. And then on the community side of it, uh, where there is tech transfer coming out of the universities, the communities don't have the infrastructure necessary to take advantage of those opportunities. We don't have the right types of facilities like incubators. Uh, we don't have the early stage capital necessary to, to take advantage of those opportunities. We don't have experienced managers that can uh, take over from the crazy professor to uh, take the companies and, and grow them. And we have some real, real workforce issues. We don't have the programs in place that can retrain the workers that used to be in very low-skilled, durable goods manufacturing settings to work in on the factory floor of these uh, high-tech settings. So I, th I think uh, we certainly should be excited that uh, we do have these universities in spread across New York State. They're getting federal funding, they're getting state funding, but there's some really significant missing pieces, so we're not taking advantage of those, uh, those opportunities. Uh, you know, I can speak of Cornell University that gets six, seven hundred million dollars a year uh, out of the federal government and state government and R&D funding. Uh, much of it is for basic research, not applied research, uh, not likely to be research. It's going to have a near-term impact on the economy. Uh, some could say that Cornell University was the uh, birthplace of nanotechnology. Uh, they were involved in nanotech before it was a, a household word and a word that's misused by most elected officials. Uh, to, to be really cynical, uh, you know, Cornell can probably figure out how many angels can comfortably fit in a carbon nanotube, but can they figure out how that new carbon nanotube invention is going to be useful to the private sector. So again, I think there's a big disconnect between how our universities function and how they can help our businesses create jobs and how they can help launch uh, new businesses that, that need to use technology in New York State to be competitive in an urban and uh, in an international marketplace. So my takeaway from this, if, if there's any, is that we've got this wonderful resource of uh, R&D universities. Our businesses are only going to survive in upstate New York or New York State in general if they can use that technology to be competitive in an international marketplace. But right now, the universities need to do things some, some things differently. And I think more importantly, the local communities need to th do things differently to take advantage of those, uh, those great opportunities. And I think there might be a role uh, for, this, for our state in that to incentivize universities, tie incentives to some of the funding they're getting. There might be a role uh, for New York State to help communities uh, uh, better take advantage of those tech transfer opportunities, or the state's role might be to just let it all happen organically and step away because, in my experience, some of the state incentive programs uh, aren't all that useful, certainly the ones that, that we try to use in, in economic development and, and tech transfer. And again, to take this back to some of the models that we've looked at today in the rankings, I think it would be really useful to see uh, the licensing revenues that are coming out of the R&D investment in our universities. Uh, I think it would be useful to see what private sector equity has been attracted to the companies that have spun out of universities and a ratio relating that to the uh, government funding that's, uh, that's going in. And then a very, very general wild card. I'd be interested in some kind of measure of the eff effectiveness of the use of taxes collected. We look at uh, 
the tax rates, how many taxes are being collected, uh, is there a way to measure the effectiveness or efficiency of the use of those, those taxes? I don't <coughs> mind paying taxes if I think the taxes are being used well. And uh, I think the closer you get uh, down to uh, in local communities where you're paying local property taxes and can really see how your taxes are, are being used, it's a much clearer picture. But when you get to the state or federal level, it gets very, very blurry. And I think we all get a little bit discouraged, but I think that would be a great metric if, if we could get to that. <coughs>